Margie, but uh, Butch Jakes, Patrick James, Michael Keane, Terry Lee, Christina Lean, three times. Valisa, Kai Lucas, Ryan Lucas. Larry Malden. That's an athlete. You see how he... Athlete reaction. That's right. Here. Justin McGee, Reed Moore, a bunch of times. Holly Meyer, Abigail Owens, Brandon Bennington, Kathleen Poulin. Brittany Radford. Yeah. I'm like, yes, Michael Short, Jacob Sebring, Beth Simpson, Stuart Smith, Brian Tolson, Jeremy Tompkins. <laughs> Jason Trout, Darwall, and Parker Wilson, Dan Wolf. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
Ed Erickson, 624. Brad Cole, 625. Which he told me was replacing his iPhone that broke over the weekend. So, <laughs> Larry Malden, 650. Christy Wolf, 664. Nate Bear, 750. So Nate's made 1,500 $1, bucks for the last months. two months. Ah, ah, I love that. I know. I love it. Brianna Tollison, 880. So the Tollisons took home over a thousand bucks together. Dan Wolf, 1,006. Jacob Sebring. One thousand and ninety-five bucks. Jacob's taking us all out for dinner. Right. Here you go. You got payday also. Good catch. <laughs> Athlete. Athlete. <laughs> Les Bailey, thirteen oh one. Jeff Bailey, thirteen oh one. Les Bailey, thirteen twenty-three. Reed Moore, thirteen eighty-three. Charlie Ellis, fifteen sixty-five. Nancy Demick, seventeen sixty-nine. Matt Demick, 3,330. Whoa! Oh, you got to think. <laughs> so Matt is the only person at Keller Williams that I'm aware of, and I'm hoping this year that that changes, that is in the 100% club. And it's not like the Remax 100% club. Do you guys know what that is? No. Yes. What does it mean? You make more profit share that you're not paying any cap. You make more in profit share than you pay any cap. So you're working for free. Basically. Jeff Davis gets paid a... I like that. No, you're 100%. You're not working for free. Yeah. <laughs> okay, exactly. Yeah. True. Uh, if you're making all your money. That's right. It's yours. Keep it. Okay, so a couple yeah, things on the training calendar real quick. I want to highlight tomorrow. Diet, correct? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, the way she was <laughs> looking at us. I know, that look uh, kind of threw me for a second. Is teaching um, higher earnings and it's lead generation in here at 1 o'clock to 2.30, correct? Hey, congratulations. Thank you, Prop. Come on in. I'm going to leave. I just wanted to stay for a minute. I spent So anything else in the training calendar we need to highlight real quick? Yeah, uh, lunch and learn with uh, Dave and Jamin Taylor on Thursday. Oh, awesome. Yep. yep. Um, so they're coming in and so Dave will talk, right? You'll hit the pick side, and yeah. Jamie will hit the graphics and marketing and all that branding side as well. So uh, noon, right? Yeah, noon. Yep, noon lunch and learn. So how many of you guys were at Fierce Conversations this last week? Okay, I would just to share so that you guys understand, because I know all of you have listened to me, you know, rant and rave about why you should go to Fierce Conversations for the last three months. And even though it's over, I want you to understand why I think it's so important. If I could just get three ahas real quickly that you guys can share with the group, anybody that was there, something that was powerful that they took away. Mark. All the missed conversations that I haven't had that I need to have. The missed conversations that you haven't had that you need to have. Mm -hmm. Cool. What else? The relationship is the conversation. This was a real aha for me from a listings <coughs> perspective and from a buyer's perspective. Which is we get um, we get so angry with our clients when they get angry with us, and we say, "Gosh, I've done everything. I've been marketing their house. I've been working on it, calling agents to to tell them about my property. I'm doing open houses. I'm doing all this stuff, and I don't understand why they're upset with me." And we forget that the relationship is the conversation. So when we're not having consistent conversation with our clients. We have no right to get mad when they get frustrated with us because they don't feel connected with us. We feel like, well, I'm doing professionally all the right actions, and yet we drop the ball all the time on the conversations because it takes time, it takes energy, they may, be, they may complain. Sometimes we're afraid of the conversation because they may have something that we don't want to talk about, and yet that, we do it all the time. What do you hear when you take a listing that's been listed with someone else? Or get a client that has had you know, a buyer that has had a previous realtor. What is the most frequent complaint that they have about their previous agent? No, never heard from them. The relationship is the conversation. What other? Uh, that was one of my favorite ones as well. What other ahas? Nate, any ahas from previous conversations? Uh, it was very fierce. <laughs> <laughs> so insightful, Mr. Bear. Anything I, else? I think it was a. Probably the biggest part of my business is knowing how to talk to people like that. It's huge. Absolutely. Yep. Um, 
biggest part of the conversation is for me to shut up and listen. I saw a quote yesterday, I put it out, I actually stole it from another team leader out of Charleston, South Carolina. Courage is the ability to stand up and do something. Courage is the ability to sit down and listen. And I thought, oh boy, that's the truth, listening. So, excellent. I enjoyed the uh, confrontation conversation and how to approach it. Um, it was just very insightful to to see how to go about, you know, the steps to take prior to having that conversation and initiating it. It was a huge piece, you know, in, in the sense that it doesn't automatically, you know, come off such such an angry thing. Well, you made me think of something too. Um, the fierce conversations isn't about a fierce conversation. Right. It has. It's not about confrontation or turmoil. It's about communicating with your friends, your family, your coworkers, or if you're in a coaching capacity, whatever, and having effective conversations. It doesn't necessarily mean confrontational. It's to learn and grow with each other. It was very cool. Here's loyalty. That's what he said yeah. is the goal. And it makes it very rewarding. Um, I actually, I can't even remember the name. It. What's the most important thing that we should be talking about today? I did that with all three of my kids. That are, mm -hmm. I mean, even my six-year-old. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing what I heard back. Yeah, it was very cool. That's a, that's a great question, that one. I, I also used it this weekend with, uh, he's a college, uh, a college coach down in Tacoma. And I just opened it up, and it was amazing what came out of it. Yeah, the things that you can learn. Yeah, it's it's cool. opens up a whole new world. What does that dialogue look like with the client when you're the agent that sits down and says, you know what, we've got your home on the market, or we're looking to buy a house, and what's the most important thing that we should be talking about today? You will definitely distinguish yourself from other realtors in the industry, I promise. So it was an awesome class. It, when we bring it again in three years, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully sooner, um, definitely make sure to take it because it is totally worth it. Um, so I want to show you guys, how many of you have worked with Dave Davis on your properties? Okay, absolutely unbelievable resource we have in the building for you. Um, what he puts together on virtual tours, which are really not virtual tours, they're like productions. Um, is absolutely distinguishes your property from the others. So Dave and I have a little deal going, and we're working on putting together some videos for the market center as well. We finished our first one, and um, I wanted to have this done earlier in the year, and of course it kept getting bounced to the bottom of my priority list, but we finally have it done. So we're gonna actually release it on Facebook and some other, um, just some recruits here, hopefully the next day, when we have a YouTube ready. Um, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek first, so enjoy. Is, is the volume good to go? We'll find out. Enjoy yes. the sneak peek. Select. Recruit Select 
focuses on locating talented people, hiring them methodically to teach them how to do jobs that you need to do for your team. As a realtor, you have to come early and leave late to be successful. And what I've learned at Keller Williams is how to build a team, which enables me to be able to have time with my family as well as build a business. And that's one of the biggest things that I've learned here at Keller Williams is how to build a real estate team. Teamwork to um, me is huge because that's why we came to Keller Williams was to learn how to build a team. We were basically trying to reinvent the wheel where we are. And um, without teamwork, we would not be where we are today. You know, one of the things I love about what Keller Williams is about is that they really truly want me to have a business worth having a life worth living. Um, the great thing about that to me is that they don't teach you, well, this is just how you kind of um, survive in this industry. Right? You know, at the end of the day, I have a business that I love and I'm passionate about, that I get to be myself at. <laughs> I have somebody that, that understands life, living a life by design is what we can do. It doesn't have to be by default. Uh, the whole environment supports that, and, and uh, it's a big deal to me. Uh, I, love, I love the life that I live. I have a family. Real estate can't control that. It's got to be a support to that. Success means to me, um, it's not necessarily financial, it's, it's mental, it's all of those things combined. It's, it's what are you doing for yourself? What are you doing for your business? Are you happy as a person inside? Um, success is a combination of everything, your family life, your home life, your, your business life. And if you're good in one area and not good in the other area, it hampers your success. I'm Matt Dimmick with Keller Williams last year. I'm Dan Wolf and I'm Jurassic. I've been selling real estate here for pretty near 30 years and I love what I do. I'm Reed Moore. I work at the best place in the world, Keller Williams Alaska. Hi, I'm Darwalton. I'm Darwalton King at Cambridge, Alaska, Keller Williams. I'm Ryan Donaldson with Keller Williams of Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> and filming it, but guys, get creative with media in your business. There's so much you can do, and you've got a resource right here. Um, do something on your clients. Do something on some people closing on a house, moving into the property. Think outside the box. People love media, and set yourself apart from what's happening in the rest of the industry. And um, we've got Jamin and Dave sitting there, and they are they are true professionals, and really the best of that. Thank you. Um, okay, Miss Radford, come on up, have a seat. So I've asked Brittany Radford, uh, for those of you who don't know her, now you do, um, to come <laughs> in and let me kind of chat with her a little bit and ask her a few questions and she's completely unprepared. Um, I haven't given her any questions, I just wanted her to talk from her heart. So Brittany, you and I have worked pretty closely together for the last 18 months. So. Talk to me a little bit about January 2010, sort of mindset, where you were in your business, and what you were facing. Um, well, I was working on a team that um, fell apart, and um, right at the beginning, I was well, trying to make that decision, that life decision of what do I do from here? Do I go get a job? Do I take the skills that I have learned over the past couple of years and run with it? I mean, I was scared to death. I never had any of those things. I had no idea, and I was actually scared of it. And um, my little boy <laughs> said, Mommy, you're so good. <laughs> and I said, I didn't keep in mind. Um, I, was, I was actually heading out for looking for a job. And I thought, gosh, what am I going to? Son believes in me, I taught him that, and I'm just going to jump in and I'm going to tell later. <laughs> So you have how many children, Brittany? Four. Four kids, ages what to what? Uh, 16, 16, 13, 11. Okay, 
and single mom. Mm -hmm. So she's doing it out there. Yay. Um, okay, so you're scared to death, you're terrified. Um, you and I start talking a little bit, and you go to family reunion. Um, and before that, even in January, February, so you, you made up your mind. I'm not going to go get a real job. I'm going to. I'm going to do this. So what did you do? So you, you made your mind up, and then what? What did you do? What did you do to get into action? Um, first, I recognized that I had to have listings. I was used to. Can you say that again? I had to have. I knew that that's where all of the leads came from. So that's what I learned as a buyer. Because the more listings that the team leader got, the more business I had. Mm -hmm. So I went out and um, I did the one at a time thing for a little while, and then I realized this isn't working for me. I did a lot, so I um, talked to a builder, and I knew that that would be a lot in my basket. And I never stopped the one at a time that was expired. This was every single day for sale by owners, every single day. But I also needed the big. So, and I want to, number one, you went out and you secured a builder's account, mm -hmm. um, which you had, I mean, and, and you know, I don't mean, you had no resume to speak of, you know, in terms of you hadn't run a business on your own, you had been a buyer's agent. Now, you had an impressive resume as a buyer's agent, tons and tons and tons of deals, but you had no, I am Brittany Radford, this is my business. You just kind of went in and said, Here's what I'll do for you. You presented a, a, a whole marketing strategy, um, and you asked for the business. And one of the pieces to that is um, I, I didn't want to do a business what I can do for you, what I can do for you. That was a big piece of my proposal, but um, on the end page, it said what I expect from Troy Davis Homes, and it engaged him. But, um, he, he interviewed 10 builders. Mm -hmm. um, that engaged him because it made him him and I both understand that we have to work as a team together, not just, this is what you do for me. I need to fix from him. Well, I need to fix from him at nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I know no signs, I have nothing, so I truly did Yeah. I, mean, I want to go back to the, the what you call the onesies, um, the ones and twos. You, you said it in passing like it was just a, not a big deal, but I want to focus on that. Every day, what did you call? All oh, expired listings. Every day. Every day and night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> over and over and over again. I can't think of a time where she wasn't calling. I mean, you had no choice, right? You said to me one time, you said, I, I don't, I, I can't fail. There, it's just not even an option. There is no option as failure, so I will be relentless on the phone. The word that comes to mind when I think of you is uh, tenacity, just nonstop. So, so you get the builder's account, you start making your, your every day making your expired calls, your for sale by owner calls, really expired. You really, really hammered the expires. Your listing inventory began to build up. Kind of give me an overview of the year and how you felt it progressed. Um, well, I was bouncing back and forth because buyers were what I knew. So I secured the listing site. So then I'm going, hey, where is everybody? And <laughs> so um, I had to start bouncing back to buyers and finding a perfect balance mm -hmm. in between. And then um, started reading, gosh, reading book after book after book. And my business was about 50 50, and I wanted it to be through these books that I read, um, 70 30. And then when I started getting 70 30, 70 percent on the listing site, my business 30 percent buyers. That's when I started seeing the amount of buyers I was dropping. So I had 30, I was dealing with 30% of the buyers, but we still had 70% that were falling out. Sure. So that's when I realized I needed some help. Mm -hmm. And I started in the wrong area um, looking for help. I needed some hires that didn't fit the position. Great people just didn't fit where I needed them to fit. And that was my own fault. So I had to learn how to hire, and that's what I wanted to know, right? how to hire the proper way, um, and taking that next, next step. And then, um, where I am today is I, I'm in a good spot. Um, Give us an overview of what a good spot looks like for you. Um, recognizing my failures and growing from them. So 
in the last month, well, June 1st on my birthday, and then um, all of these mistakes that I've made have created this for me, and I feel sorry for myself, and oh goodness, what am I going to do? So I, back to square one, what did I do in January? I made listings. So I made a goal for myself that I will take on 10 listings this month, by the end of the month, and then I called you and I said, please hold me accountable. <laughs> So we've got a couple days left. Where are you right now? Nine. Nine. So I read you guys last week a piece of the email from Brittany about her for sale by owner um, that you called, I believe it was 28 times. Uh, I called him seven times and asked for the business 28 times. She asked for the business 28 times. Your script to close that was, and this is my favorite one. <laughs> yes, it's that annoying realtor calling you again. Can I list your house today? <laughs> Basically, she just said, until you just list it, I'm not letting go. So we have one more listing to go in a couple days. I have no doubt that you're going to get there. Um, now, have you taken Recruit Select? Yes. Okay. Here's, there's a couple things I want you to hear from what she's saying. So let me go back. 2010, you finished out the year. You closed just short, I believe it was just shy of 11, uh, $8 million in volume. So you hear that, that's zero, that's a business of zero. And in the next year, a business of eight million. That's nothing to, that's insane, that's awesome. In the valley, do you know how many sides you have to do to do eight million out there as opposed to out in here? I mean, a dead, just dead truth. Um, what I love hearing is that you say, I made some hires, they weren't the best, you had a, you realized that you had a choice right there as to how you're, you're, you were going to view that. You were either going to say, man, I suck at hiring. I failed. I hired the wrong person and throw in the towel and quit. Or go, okay, so what did I learn? What did I do? What can I do differently this time? And keep plowing ahead. So talk to me about what happens when your mindset fails. Because one thing you have is an incredibly focused mindset. And a lot of times I think people see that in, in each other or in other people and they go, man, they never struggle with that. What happens when you start struggling with your mindset? What do you do? Well, I go back to the failure is an option. It's just not um, what can I do better next time? Um, how did 